So last week, we took a look at five potential RB1s getting drafted at RB3 prices or later. We're going to flip the script and do it with the pass catchers. So today, we are looking at five players getting drafted as wide receiver threes, so wide receiver 25 or later, that I think have the potential to hit that top 12 range. End of year, the best value, the biggest sleepers, the dudes that really, really really have a chance of popping this year. Just a reminder, our season-long draft guide is up for pre-order right now on bdg.co. The easiest way to get it is by signing up on Prize Picks and the least expensive way to get it, signing up on prizepicks.com or using the link to the app in the description using promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time. And that'll get you access to the draft guide for free via email. But if you're not in a participating state for Prize Picks, y'all can just head over to bdge.co. You know what we gotta do, we gotta tuck our shirts. Got to stop yelling. Let's see. First dude up on this list is Mr. Allen Robinson of the Los Angeles Rams. I'm using the 4 for 4 page of ADP, which takes into account all different types of leagues. It's underdog, it's ESPN, it's best ball 10, it's Yahoo. So I, I think this is probably the most accurate for a lot of the people out there watching. Al Robinson is currently the wide receiver 25, so technically wide receiver 3. And just masterful, just, just beautiful work done here by the LA front office, losing Robert Woods, losing OBJ to ACL, and then in the offseason, they signed Allen Robinson to basically take the place of both of those guys, okay? They're, uh, they're just filling a hole here like a swinging guard and you look back at the involvement from those guys last year and just the opportunity that's up for grabs for a guy like Allen Robinson Woods 7.7 .7 targets per game OBJ was up at six targets per game dare I say Deshaun Jackson started the year off in LA and there's some targets open right there. there's a lot of opportunity going around here for Allen Robinson who clearly slots in as the number two there right behind Cooper Cup all right, they're going to throw a ton. This is the sixth highest scoring offense in the NFL last year. The pass rate jumped up when Matt Stafford came over. I expect them to continue that flow of offensive scheme. They have Matt Stafford. Why would you not? Okay, they're going to throw at a high rate. They're going to throw it really well. They're going to score a lot. I think both Cooper Cup and A-Rob could finish as top 12 guys easily here, right? And the question becomes, and this is something I've pointed out a million times over the uh, offseason, the question becomes, is A-Rob still the same A-Rob? And by looking at almost all individual metrics of his route running and his separation, uh, man, press, route, win rate, routes versus men, all that kind of shit. He shows up and he, and he balled out, all right? So Al Robinson still got it, and now he's going over to a situation that definitely has gotten it. So this should be the least the least controversial one on this list by far. Number two on this list is Mr. Darnell Mooney, right? Allen Robinson left his ass high and dry in Chicago. Mooney's the wide receiver, 30 off the board right now. And the way I'm looking at Darnell Mooney right now is how I looked at Tyler Lockett uh, when he finally came over or took over as the wide receiver one in that Seattle offense, it was like the perfect storm of just no one else there to compete for targets. He was already the guy with Tyler, uh, with Russell Wilson. And obviously, you know, the quarterback difference between Justin Fields and Russell Wilson is where the tough part about this kind of analysis comes into play. But the, the situations are similar where Darnell Mooney might not be a wide receiver one for a real team, but he will be this year because there is no other option there. You look at the splits with Darnell Mooney playing with Allen Robinson and playing without Allen Robinson, okay? And the fantasy points per game aren't necessarily drastic, but if you look at the opportunity here, man, on the right side, you have the five games without Allen Robinson. His target numbers go up from eight to 9.6. Like the, uh, the opportunities are fucking real here. And even with Allen Robinson, I mean, eight targets per game is a lot. Just like overall massive volume here. So again, reminds me a lot of Lockett where it's like, you're the clear wide receiver one and have no choice, but really to, you know, to, to pop off with some fantasy success here. I just also want to say, this is not me being super in on Darnell Mooney. It's, it's me acknowledging the path for the blow up there, the path for him to the wide receiver one status, because to be honest, he hasn't played very well with Justin Fields. Um, and these are the splits down here. At least he's played worse with Justin Fields. So I looked at the games in which Justin Fields had thrown more than 14 pass attempts in a game because I think, you know, 15 is probably around the mark where you're like at least playing three quarters of the game. There are times where there's injuries or whatever. So I would say these are the nine and eight games in which Justin Fields actually played quarterback for the Chicago Bears. And you could see out of the split, he averages a ton more fantasy points. He averages nearly four more targets. He averages three more receptions. He averages four more PPR fantasy points than with him. So that is something to be a little bit nervous about. But I think if they can kind of iron out the kinks this offseason, then you have a duo 
where if Justin Fields comes into his own, Mooney's the clear wide receiver one in Chicago. So I think the upside is real. The upside is real for, I think, both of the New Orleans Saints wide receivers. And I'm not talking about Jarvis. I'm talking about Michael Thomas and Chris Alave, right? I'm sneakily starting to like Jameis Winston more and more in fantasy this year. I don't know why. Maybe it's a gut feeling, but I think that most of my super flex leagues are going to have either Matt Ryan or James Winston as my quarterback too. And listen, I'm probably one of the most risk averse players that you will ever meet when it comes to guys like Michael Thomas guys. There's weird, bizarre situations happening here, right? Again, where there's smoke, there's fire. With Michael Thomas, it's like, it's got beef with the, the New Orleans Saints, just the team and the coach and all that kind of shit. On top of that, you got a two year high ankle sprain that he's dealing with like craziness going on with Michael Thomas. And I'm usually really, really pulled back on this situation, but I think we got a lot of time before the summer, so I don't want to rush to judgment here. And I'm going to be monitoring reports and videos and all this stuff and uh, fantasy doctors and their injury analysis on Michael Thomas to see what's really going on here. Okay, I think Winston is going to be asked to sling it a bit more this year. I think we'll probably see an Alvin Kamara suspension. I don't think this is a team set up that can go ground and pound off the rip. I think even if Winston is in the middle of the pack in terms of passing volume, someone in the wide receiver group is is going to eat here. I'm in on Michael Thomas as long as the reports start to swing positively. If they start to swing negatively, then we love Christopher Olave, one of my favorite rookies in this class. Again, I talked about him in either yesterday or earlier this week's video. He just hasn't gotten enough hype. He hasn't gotten the hype that the other players have because they all have like very, very crazy pieces of talents within their repertoire. They're either huge or really fast or got drafted first, whatever the case may be. Olave doesn't really have that, but he's such a well-rounded specimen and he does everything correct, man. He is crispier than the fucking skin of KFC chicken. If you look at this success rate versus coverage chart, he's one of the best in the NFL, man. He's going to be awesome out of the gate for the Saints. And I think if something goes wrong with Michael Thomas, Alave's in there to absolutely eat. And I think we could see Rashad Bateman gorge himself this year. He's the wide receiver 31. Off the rip, I'll say this. The huge concern I have for Bateman is the overall passing volume in this offense. There was a video I made earlier this week about why I'm hesitant to draft Mark Andrews. The Ravens, when you look at prior to last year, when you look at their passing rate, like the percentage of their plays that were passes, as well as the pace of the offense when they play that way, it's basically dead last across the board in those statistics. Passing, passing, passing just don't happen. And it's very slow. It's run play, slow run play, slow, not a lot of volume. And again, they're like 31st or 32nd in the league and all of those metrics across the board annually when they were playing the way they wanted to play with Lamar Jackson, okay? They had no choice but to pass the ball a lot last year because their running backs just like passed away. I don't think there's any chance that we see them go down that same route this year though. But we do have both the running backs, Gus and J.K. Dobbins, coming back from ACL tears, and the recovery apparently is not is not an elite one at this point. We've, we've heard some weird rumblings about it. So maybe they meet in the middle in terms of pass rate and run rate. And as of right now, they have almost nothing on their depth chart of real substance besides Bateman and Mark Andrews, right? And Hollywood saw like 145 targets last year. He was top 10 in the NFL in targets. Bateman is a better route runner. Bateman has much better hands. He's not as explosive as Hollywood, of course, but he can be like a Keenan Allen light, man. I think he's a candidate to catch 90 to 95 plus passes. And if that's the case, the offense is going to be good, right? Some of those can be scoring opportunities. I think he's got an outside chance to really emerge top 15, top 12 guy. Uh, so I love Bateman, right? And I'm not going to lie. Listen, like this was a little bit of a tougher one to talk myself into because I love the player, but in my in my heart of black hearts, I have a tough time thinking that this is going to be anywhere near as pass heavy as they as they were last year. I think it's going to be more run heavy, like I said, 45 times already. So it's tough, but in the best case situation, Bateman will ball out because that's what he does. He's a fucking baller. All right, before we get to number five, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll have a video just like this coming out tomorrow and basically every day throughout the rest of the summer. Number five on this list is Mr. Kadarius Tony of the New York Giants, man. On a per game, on a per snap, on a per route, on a per target metric, Tony is, Tony is just it, man. He is just it. The ability to trust Tony, not it. I trust a fucking lawn chair under Vince Wilfork more than I trust Tony showing up and playing for 17 games. But the upside is real as shit, and he's getting drafted late as shit. This dude can really do it all when he's on the field, man. His target rate, just the, the percentage of times he was targeted while running a route, seventh in the NFL last year, 28.9%. We know his best attribute is what he does with the ball in his hands, evaded tackles per reception, number one in the NFL. His win rate versus man coverage last year, 18th in the NFL. He can separate. He does that really well. And when he gets the ball in his fucking hand, he has no one's tackling him. He's too, too, too fucking good, man. I brought this stat up a few times as well, but... Tony had a 189 yard receiving game last year. I went back since 2000 and looked at the list of players that have had as a rookie, a game of 180 yards or more. The list is borderline flawless. 
Jamar Chase, Justin Blackman, Anquan Bolden, Mike Evans, Rod Gardner, Jamar Chase, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kadarius Tony, Keelan Cole, and Odell Beckham Jr. All right. Some misses, of course, but for the most part, like you, you either miss or you become a fucking all star. And Tony has every bit of all star in his fucking veins. And I think that we're going to see it this year with an improved offense under Brian Dable, a better offensive line, more time for Daniel Jones. I don't know. I'm just in on Tony where he's getting drafted. He moves up to like a sixth or seventh round pick. I'll be a little bit more hesitant. But for right now, you can get him in like the 10th round, 11th round of a lot of drafts. And I, I'm telling you that wide receiver one upside, the path to that is real. All right. So drop some uh, player names down below that you think are getting drafted right now as wide receiver threes or later that could end up as wide receiver ones. We out here. Subscribe to the channel. Watch a video from earlier this week. I love y'all.